Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Boeing wants to make their passenger airplanes entirely autonomous. Amazon's, Amazon Kindle's book charts are being badly skewed by bots, and it's hurting authors' bottom lines. A battery powered by trash is now a proven reality. And the new Mars rover looks like something Batman might drive. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories for the week of June 14th, 2017. The days of listening to the captain speaking on a flight might be numbered according to Boeing. The aerospace, aerospace giant has been actively working on the pilotless technology and has already built an automatic takeoff and landing system into its newest model, the 787 Dreamliner. The industry is also facing a severe shortage of pilots, so Boeing is looking for a high-tech solution. Mike Sinnott, VP at Boeing, responsible for future technology, says the basic building blocks of the technology are clearly available. There's going to be a transition from the requirement to have a skilled, a skilled aviator operate the airplane to having a system that operates the vehicle autonomously if we can do that at the same level of safety. He goes on to say that's a really big if. The gold standard, he explained, is to build an AI flight system that can replicate Captain Chelsea Sully, Sullenberger's 2009 landing of a crippled jet on the Hudson River in New York, losing no passengers in the process. The captain was praised for choosing his unusual landing spot rather than trying to make it to an airport, which, as was later realized, was highly unlikely to have worked. However, getting a computer to make the same decision is a challenge. Sinnott said, we are not smart enough to pre-program all those things. The machine has to be capable of making the same set of decisions. If it can't, we can't go there. I will take a moment to say that that Captain Sully, um, like amazing decision <clears throat> he made. I don't, mm -hmm. uh, everybody remembers this, I'm certain, but mm -hmm. to have the, the level of requirement, like the computers must be at least as smart as you, buddy. Is or at least be able to make <clears throat> decisions. Yeah. Well, here's yeah. the thing. Like, being somebody in aviation, like, aviation management, that's my program in college, and I'm a pilot. Um, I actually don't see this technology taking over the commercial space mm. for at least another three or four decades, believe it or not. Mm. Because right now in aviation, we're still using radio navigation, which sounds... What's that? We've been using that since like World War II, right? So like radio beacons and things like that. We're still getting used to GPS in aviation. Right. So if you think about that, imagine the ability to have no, no one in the cockpit. Like in aviation, that's a weird thing is that these technologies take a longer time to get in, like used to mm -hmm. because the amount of safety involved, especially like if you're talking about the FAA, so America, uh, Transport Canada, you have to get it all certified, everything else, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. And what if there's a power outage? What if there's something else, right? Right. Yeah. So me personally, I'm not sure if I can see this being implemented for like another few decades. But if there's like a heart attack or like if there's something else. Right. Sort of like the autopilot sort of situation. Yeah. But if you have that as a backup, then yeah, that's like perfect. Yeah, like could a it, learning autopilot. Or could it happen though where instead of just jumping right to, hey, this plane flies itself. Yeah. So it already lands and takes off by itself. It already has autopilot. Mm -hmm. So could it not become more 
well, I, I guess like less a, a, less of a skilled position to be a pilot because being a pilot, yeah. you have to be really focused and in tune with what's going on around you. Well, not even that, because nowadays it's really come down to pushing a button, right? Because as soon as the airplane takes off, yeah. they're on autopilot. That's so, the at what point is the pilot needed? It's when the decision making comes in. That's exactly. Right. It's, it's so, the human element, right? Yeah. So With that could, being said, can you fly it like a drone somewhere else, right? Or yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> point too. <laughs> Take but over. could could the pilot, if we so let's say it continues to be a pilot, but um, could they be less skilled and just be a decision maker? And the autonomous nature of the plane is able to take the decisions made by this person and implement them. It's so a, if yeah. I say, you know what, we're not going to make it, the computer mm -hmm. may not be able to realize we're not going to make it to the airport. Mm -hmm. We need to land on the Hudson River. Yeah. <laughs> Could right. I not say to the computer, that's what we're going to do, and the computer just obliges and does mm -hmm. its thing? Well, that's the thing, right? Is that I think it's going to be a slow movement into this, right? Yeah. So, like, if we are going this direction, we might see, oh, maybe we'll let the systems do their thing, um, but we might have somebody there, like a pilot, that has sure. to sit there for just in case, right? right. But, and that's yeah. what I see in IT, right? Like, just I wonder if there's a shortage of pilots. Maybe having something like this fly the plane will increase the pilot hours, because I know that's a thing. You can... Mm -hmm. you can be a pilot and you're only allowed to, s to fly a certain number of hours because how taxing right. it is intellectually. Yeah. If you're fatigued, yeah. it's right? dangerous. Yeah. But if you have a program that's flying the plane for you, maybe you can fly double the hours. Sorry, pilots. More money, more money, <laughs> more money. Come on. Right? I, I want a like, career. Come on, man. Like, yeah. I, I want to keep my hours up. So do you want 10 hours a day or 20? Exactly. <laughs> All right. So... Fake, story. fake books powered by Click Farms are gate crashing Amazon's charts. And despite being aware of the issue for well over a year, Amazon has thus far failed to resolve it. First of all, it's important to understand that the authors share a lump sum pot in the money of in the Kindle Unlimited program. The progressively big issue with this is that scammers have been raiding the Kindle Unlimited pot using a simple but effective trick. They usually pilfer the content first of all, pilfer the content first of all by stealing legitimate authors work and running it through a synonymizer and then uploading it to Amazon thus avoiding the automatic plagiarism detectors mm. they make sure the book is as long as possible but as they are enrolling the title in Kindle Unlimited they keep it under the program's limit of 3,000 pages these thieves make the books free for a few days and then use a variety of banned methods to generate a huge and immediate surge in downloads, generally suspected to be bots or click farms or dummy accounts or some combination thereof. These fake books then suddenly jump into the top 20 of the free charts, displacing authors who have gone to a considerable effort to put together an advertising campaign for their work. When authors and readers report these fake books to Amazon, no action usually gets taken until the following Monday. By then, it's often too late, and these titles have returned to the paid listings, and the subsequent boost in page reads, which normally follows a free run, enables them to grab a huge chunk of the Kindle's unlimited, the Kindle Unlimited pot, which is the same shared pot that all authors get paid from. Man. Well, I know this firsthand because Becca is an author, and she's on Amazon, she's on Kindle, she's. Oh yeah. So we we run uh, these promos. Wow. For you know we want to give away the book for free for seven days. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So if someone does something like this, and it takes away from her what she? revenue from that, and mm -hmm. the amount of countless hours that a, a true author puts into it's heartbreaking you know well, it really is not only that i didn't even realize a synonymizer is a thing but could you imagine That's somebody's taking her yeah. book running it through this synonymizer which i guess is just replacing every word with another synonymous word <laughs> yeah um and How then strange. reaping the benefit of the work that she's done yeah. with no effort at all. I bought Becca a book, uh, a mm -hmm. Chesterton book, a uh, while ago. Mm -hmm. I think it was for Christmas or something. And it was off of Amazon. Mm -hmm. But it was, a f it was a paperback. So it probably came from Kindle Direct or something like that. Yeah. Um, and w when she read it, mm -hmm. she commented about, there's, there's a lot of weird, like the terminology is weird. And then it hit us as we, were, as we learned about this story. Could that book have been synonymized? Synonym synonymized? Synonymizer? You know what? Because 
then people are able to sell this book and make revenue from it. Mm -hmm. And this was a physical book, but Kindle Direct Press allows also printed books. Well, that's the thing, right? Is that I think that this is going to be a huge field, especially when we're talking about like AI and machine learning, because there's so much Mm -hmm. potential for business there, especially because like, you know, YouTube has the auto flagging feature for copyright. So I wonder if somehow these companies are going to integrate like AI and machine learning into when it scans a book, like, you know how it has to, that's why they have to change all like the nouns Mm. and verbs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I wonder if that's an application for some kind of artificial intelligence wow becoming bookworms it's just heartbreaking it's crazy man oh man pursuing more efficient sources of renewable energy has led many to many iterations of the battery but researchers just brought a really interesting new version to the table one made from potassium ions and trash the scientists started with a rusty recycled stainless steel mesh and used a potassium ferrocyanide solution, which is also used in red wine production and fertilizers, to dissolve ions out of the mesh's layer of rust. The, <laughs> I am totally just like... <laughs> the, why? One for you, one for me. <laughs> one for you, battery, one uh, for me. <laughs> why? Okay. Those ions, including iron and nickel, then combined with other ions in the solution. Together, they formed a salt that clung to the mesh and scaffolded nanocubes that could store and release potassium ions. The movement, I know, the movement of potassium ions allows for conductivity, which was boosted with an added coating of oxidized graphite. Lithium batteries have been the go-to version for renewable energy storage, but lithium is expensive and exists in limited amounts. Plus, lithium batteries have had a troublesome history of exploding. (laughs) Sodium ion batteries have been suggested as an alternative because sodium is plentiful and cheap. Two qualities that also apply to the potassium ions used in this study. Though this battery was just a proof of concept study for the researchers, it has an impressive result. The battery has high capacity, discharge voltage, and cycle stability. Its use of recycled materials makes it an especially appealing possibility. See, the good news, the good news always makes me so happy. Does it make you think of Back to the Future? Doc oh. shoving some garbage into the Doc. engine? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Mar- I guess Marty doing the... Rick yeah, and Morty. So cool. I'm sorry, Rick and Morty reference too. <laughs> oi, oi. <laughs> Parker Brothers Concepts, the same Florida-based custom vehicle shop that built a Tron-inspired electric motorcycle, has now designed and built a new NASA rover for humans to drive around on Mars. The result looks like something Adam West would be proud to drive around the surface of the red planet. At two to three times the size of the Mars Curiosity rover and weighing in at over three times heavier, it would not be easy getting this new concept vehicle to Mars or landing it all in one piece. It would be well worth the attempt. The scientifically themed Mars rover concept vehicle operates on an electric motor powered by solar panels and a 700 volt battery. The rover separates in the middle with the front area designed for scouting and equipped with a radio and navigation provided by the global positioning system. The back section serves as a full laboratory which can disconnect for autonomous research. It's doubtful that this vehicle will ever leave Earth. However, some of the ideas represented in it might be incorporated into future rover designs, including the upcoming Mars 2020 mission. Wow. That is awesome. <laughs> what are you just doing? Your space back Breath and sigh. I'm like, oh, yeah. I was just thinking about Adam West. Yeah. I'd drive that to school. Moment of silence, for sure. Yeah. I, w- I would totally drive that to school. I'm like, thinking, hey, if they can't get it to Mars, <laughs> I'll take just, it. Just drive it around. <laughs> that'll, oh, be, that'll be the Category 5 mobile. <laughs> we were talking about getting you a, a ride. Oh, to yeah, Category that's perfect. All, all awesome. There if I'm go. driving in that, I also want uh, self-leasing shoes. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom. I'm Sasha Dermatis.